Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. I hope that you're having an amazing day. Yeah, it's good to be back in front of the camera. I've been sick for almost a week now with some type of flu, and it wasn't a happy fun time, but I'm almost back to normal. Well, I guess my version of normal anyway. And for a while I've been sick, there's something I've been really wanting to take a look at, and that is smart access memory, or resizable bar if you want to use the you know, non-AMD branding name, uh, on an AMD platform, uh, but with a slight twist. So yeah, I recently did look at this on an Intel Z490 and a 10900K using an RX 6800 XT. Unfortunately, as of the time that I'm looking at this stuff, NVIDIA don't have their driver updates for Ampere or other cards to take advantage of resizable bar. It is coming. I did reach out to NVIDIA recently about this. They said they don't have an exact date, but we shouldn't have to wait that much longer for it. Either way, the 6800 XT on an Intel platform performed wonderfully. That is assuming that your board does have a BIOS which allows you to utilize it. And performance was either not that much better than uh, it would be with resizable bar off to so actually a tangible nice boost so yeah basically there was no downsides enabling it however yeah i wanted to take a look at this on an amd platform using a ryzen 9 5950x and the same 6800 xt but with the difference being i wanted to see how pcie gen 3 and 4 compared to one another with resizable bar on and off so PCIe Gen 4 obviously has twice the amount of bandwidth as Gen 3, but does it actually make that much of a difference? Well, we'll take a look at that in just a moment, but I suppose I should tackle the obvious elephant in the room. What exactly is Smart Access Memory slash Resizable Bar? I've been over this several times in the past, so I'll link the Intel video as well as the article which accompanied it. Uh, if you want a more in-depth explanation. But basically speaking, it just comes down to how the uh, system accesses the GPU memory. So as I'm sure you're aware, GPUs in the modern era have pretty large amounts of VRAM on them. So two gigabytes now would be not good. And then obviously higher end cards in the modern era have like eight gigabytes, 12 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes in the case of the RX 6800 XT. And so with a resizable bar, what it allows the system to do is basically access all of the GPU's memory at once. Whereas if a resizable bar isn't a thing, then you basically can only access the memory in 256 megabyte chunks. And the reason behind this is just because of legacy with 32-bit operating systems and other things which are way outside the scope of this video to cover. But as you can probably imagine, just the fact of you were basically limited to just 256 megabyte chunks, it could cause some problems. And yeah, this is gonna be more of a thing in the future, and I'll get into why, you know, as we're closing out the video, because that's, again, a slightly different topic. But for now, anyway, there's still a nice performance advantage. So let's get into the testing methodology then. I used an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, and an RX 6800 XT, which was provided by AMD. I'm also using an MSI B550 Unify motherboard, which, well, was provided by MSI, and I'm pairing this with uh, DDR4 4000 megahertz memory. Well, it's technically 3600 megahertz, but I've done some tweaking, and it's pretty good. And this is not actually provided by anyone. I managed to grab some cheap home memory from uh, Amazon. So I'm probably going to do a review of that in the not too distant future, as it's not a particularly well known brand. In fact, it's not even a brand I can remember the name of as of time I'm recording this video. So yeah, uh, well done me for the preparation work there. Either way, getting back to the point. This uh, obviously does allow us plenty of performance to really test this out. We're going to be testing at 1440p, 1080p, and 4K, and we're going to be achieving resizable bar on and off, as well as the uh, generation of PCIe, just by going into the motherboard's BIOS and tweaking things under the PCIe section. With that said, I don't think there's too much more to say on the you know setup. Let's have a look at the results, and then we can kind of talk about things.
What type of conclusions can we draw then? Well, in the worst case scenarios, just like the Intel platform, there was no loss really in performance. Also in heavily GPU bound scenarios at 4K, for example, with tons of stuff going on, again, performance wasn't exactly leaping forward to a whole new echelon of power. With that said, there is definitely some benefits for a game like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So yeah, resizable bar, smart access memory on an AMD platform, an Intel platform, I highly suggest you leave it enabled if you can. Also, generation three and four, there doesn't really seem to be a tangible difference yet. And this brings me to just graphics in general. And yeah, generation three and four isn't really a big deal as of the time I'm recording this early 2021. Whether you're running AMD or an NVIDIA GPU, it doesn't really make a difference as of, you know, gaming anyway. There are PCIe Gen 4 benefits if you're utilizing an SSD, particularly in like productivity environments, then obviously that extra bandwidth, yeah, that, that is definitely nice. However, <laughs> things are gonna start changing in the future, given things such as the velocity architecture and DirectX 12, um, and just the ability to access so much more of the GPU's memory and streaming and so much uh, in terms of texture assets. Uh, who knows what's going to happen as mesh shading becomes more used in games and we start to see, you know, the next generation of titles utilizing Unreal Engine 5. I think that bandwidth on the you know GPU is going to become increasingly important or rather the connectivity of the bandwidth between the system and the GPU is going to be increasingly important and I suspect that but if we were to do these tests again in two three uh, years time uh, which we will definitely do although probably have to lower the resolution from 4k at a guess on an Unreal Engine 5 game uh, yeah I, I suspect that we would get quite different results especially as we start to utilize all of those new features on the GPU. For now, resizable bar is something that I would just recommend you leave on and an all AMD platform if you're running RDNA 2 and like a Zen 2 or a Zen 3 processor or whatever it is that can support resizable bar. Intel 2, same thing, definitely leave it enabled. I'm gonna be very curious to see how Nvidia's implementation actually works and we're gonna be testing that on both an Intel and an AMD platform. Obviously they don't have their own CPUs yet although he'll be curious what happens with the whole arm acquisition which is looking at best iffy at the moment whether nvidia will be able to uh, gobble up arm or not so yeah I, I personally am actually quite interested to see where the future of all of this goes and you can definitely see that there are a lot of moving pieces at the moment with a lot of preparation work uh, just to basically get us ready for these next generation game engines UE5, and I know I'm focusing on that rather heavily at the moment, but UE5 has a couple of very interesting things which are going to be very heavily utilized in next generation games with Lumen and Nanite. And obviously combine that with just the additional grunt and performance and other next generation hardware tech trickery. It's not too difficult to realize that we are in this kind of transition period as tends to happen in graphics. Generation three and four in PCIe doesn't really make much of a difference at the moment. However, bandwidth is gonna to start to take a massive leap forward in the next couple of years. We're currently using DDR4 for our higher end systems, but again, this will also change with uh, DDR5 coming in with Intel's Alder Lake and we can presume AM5 when it finally comes. It's still, as of the time I'm recording this, not known whether Warhol is going to be uh, AM4 or AM5. Although the commonly led theory at the moment is it's AM4, that's what I've been hearing, but we'll see if that turns out to be true or not. So yeah, DDR5, PCIe Gen 5 as well, that's gonna be coming on the horizon and all of these new uh, technologies for APIs and all of this other cool stuff. It's definitely gonna be a very interesting transition period. Thanks for watching the video. I think that's just about it in this one anyway. If you have enjoyed it, definitely click the like button on the video and subscribe if you're not already, as well as click the bell icon because YouTube land is a bit dicey with notifications. And also comment down below if you've had a chance to play around with smart access memory, particularly on an Intel platform. I'm curious to hear your, uh, well, experiences there. But that said, thank you very much. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.